Hi everyone, I'm Francesca, this is Fernie for Thoughts, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a tag for you because I was tagged by Kira at the Book Bella to do the booktube giving tag. I wanted to do this tag before Thanksgiving, like I feel like this tag is a Thanksgiving themed book tag, but I was sick. I had a 39 degree fever which, you know, converted like a 104 degrees fever, so it was pretty high and I was lying in bed the whole time and I didn't have the strength to lift my head up, let alone film a video, so I didn't do that for Thanksgiving. Even though it's not Thanksgiving anymore and that is one holiday that I really love and I'm sorry that we don't celebrate it here in Italy because it's just so beautiful. The spirit of Thanksgiving is something that I'm just so in love with and I hope that perhaps one day we'll just bring it uh, into our culture as we did with Halloween because we didn't really celebrate Halloween but now we kind of do, so perhaps the same thing with Thanksgiving might happen, I don't know, but anyways, getting back on track, I think that, you know, the idea of giving back or be thankful or, you know, be a better person, you know, donate to charity and all that stuff is still part of the holiday Christmassy spirit. Besides, for the first time in my life, I've been tugged by somebody else to actually do a tag, so there was no way in hell I was not gonna do this. So without further ado, let's get started. The first question is, what is a book you'd give everyone if you could? And for this one, I was hesitant because at first I thought about um, oh gosh, A Monster Calls. I had in mind the Italian title, I'm so sorry. But then I realized that the perfect answer for this question would be The Arrival by Sean Tan. This is a silent graphic novel that deals with immigration and how it feels to go to a country that we don't know, where we are foreigners, where we are strangers and we are not familiar with the customs and with the language and with its people and we feel lost and away from home and I feel that today trying to be in, you know, immigrants shoes and try to understand their point of view, trying to understand where they come from is more important than ever. It is so sweet and tender and it just takes a hold of your heart and it doesn't let go. And I love that it's a silent graphic novel, so there are no words at all. There are only pictures and images and those speak more than a thousand words. And it's just perfect because you're dealing with immigration, you're dealing with people that not necessarily know your language, but they can still read and understand the message of this graphic novel because you don't need words, you don't need a language, it's written, it's illustrated in a universal language that anybody could understand and it's just absolutely beautiful and breathtaking and anybody should read and love this book. Okay, it got intense for a moment there, I'm so sorry, but it just, that book really blew my mind away. So the second question is, what's a book you couldn't give a rat's hiney about? Okay, unpopular opinion, the um, Elena Ferrantes Quartet, the perhaps one and only Italian series that is famous everywhere in the world and that has been highly praised by most of the people who have read it. I could not give a rat's hind about that series. I just don't think that it's something for me. I think it's set in Naples in the 70s, in the 80s. It's not a time period that I'm fascinated with. I really don't like it and I don't feel any pull towards that series at all. The TV show has come out and people are praising the TV show and I just, I don't want to watch it. I'm not curious at all. I don't know what it is about that series but there's nothing, there's no part of me, no part of my brain that wants to read that series. No matter who talks about it, even Michelle Obama, I just, 
I'm not gonna read it. I don't care. Moving on. Third question. Given that the holidays are coming up, what's a book you hope somebody buys for you? Hoping that somebody buys this book for me is just wishful thinking because nobody's going to because nobody knows that I want it and it's really expensive so I just it, it's not gonna happen but still the book in question is Life in Pictures by Stephen McCary he is a photographer and he has published a lot of books and his newest most recent publication is a Life in Pictures and I just I would love to have that because I want to have a book that is just a collection of beautiful photos that don't need words, that just speak for themselves. And do you do you notice a trend in this video? If you have any recommendation of photography books or styling graphic novels, please let me know in the comments because, you know, I feel like I'm in the mood to read something like that. I've seen it in bookstores and I just, I looked at the photos and it was so beautiful. But let's be real, nobody's gonna buy it for me. I'll keep dreaming. Fourth question, what's a book or a series that you've given up on? This is bad. So, I feel ashamed at admitting this, but there's no point in hiding the truth. The Miesborn series by Brandon Sanderson. Now, wait, I love Brandon Sanderson, okay? He's my god when it comes to fantasy. We all know that. We all know that my love for Brandon Sanderson knows no bounds. But I've read the first three books in the Miss Bourne series, like the original uh, Miss Bourne trilogy, and that's my favorite trilogy of all times. And I don't think anything is ever gonna top that because it's pretty freaking impossible. But Brandon Sanderson went ahead and wrote other books in that world, let's call it like that. There are other books in that series that take place like 300 years, 1000 years, I don't know, but they take place later on, you know, after the events of the first Mistborn trilogy. So there are different characters, different setting, a western-like, far west kind of setting. There are pistols and other stuff, technology, science, whatever. And it just doesn't feel misborn because the characters are different, but the magic system is the same. It's like if you had, you know, the Harry Potter world in America in, you know, 2100. Just, it wouldn't feel the same. It wouldn't make sense. I grow too attached to a certain setting, a certain, you know, cast of characters if there's a series going on. So if that changes too much, but the series kind of continues, it loses its appeal to me. So I just, I'm not gonna keep going. I, I, I won't. I'm sorry. But there are some Sanderson books that I will not ever read. And we just have to deal with that and go on with our lives. Okay, fifth question. Who is a character you wish an author would give more time to? And I have a perfect answer for that. The character that I thought about is a character from a book that I read back in November, number 11 by Jonathan Coe. I don't know if I have done my November wrap up already or not. If I have, link down below. If I haven't, just you wait because it's coming. That book is kind of a collection of different stories, different episodes that are all kind of tied up together, but each episode has different characters, while some are always the same, you know, they keep coming back in each story, but still, there are different characters in each story, and in one of them, the story was called, wait, The Windshow Prize. The character is Nathan Pilbeam. He is a police officer who wants to become a detective and he is kind of a Sherlock Holmes-like character. He reminded me of Sherlock Holmes because he has a different way of conducting his investigations. He doesn't just look at the evidence. He thinks that in order to solve a crime, you need to think of the context 
in which that crime happened. It just reminded me of the way in which Sherlock Holmes decides to fill his brain with specific knowledge and tries to forget about anything that does not help him in his profession, in his career. And it was just amazing. And honestly, I wanted more stories that involved Nathan Peelbeam because he was just incredible and such an amazing and well-built character. And reading all the things that he kept quoting, passages from Nietzsche and Schopenhauer and just so many things all together. Jonathan Coe really did his research to write that character. Six, who's a character you wish an author would give less time to? I'm gonna go with Theta Knight from the Diviner series by Liba Bray. I just don't see why her character is important as it is. In the Diviners, there's, let's say, a cast of main characters. There's five or six of them and they each have their own chapters from their point of views but with her I don't get it I don't want to be mean but I don't get what her contribution to the plot of each single book is nor what her contribution to the overarching plot of the series might be and I know that I'm still reading the second book perhaps she will do something in the third book but I'm just not particularly interested in her character and in her story and in her past. I just, I don't get it. So if there was less of her, I wouldn't mind. Seven, if you had to give up almost all of your books, which ones would you keep? Ah, gosh. This is hard because I'm a hoarder of books, so I just keep accumulating books. Even ones I don't like, I just want to have them, I want to own them. I'm just crazy like that. But if I had to give them all up and could only keep one, I would choose my copy of Dance on My Grave by Adam Chambers. And that is because this is the first book I've ever annotated in. And it was just a beautiful and unique reading experience. And it's a book that Back when I read it, I felt very close to me, dealt with things that resonate with me a lot, that are very close to me and personal and intimate, so I'm not gonna go into much detail right now because I did a review back then, whatever, but I just, I felt it so close to me and it has a special meaning and I don't know, I just, I could never give that book up so if I had to keep only one, I would keep Dance on My Grave. Eight, what's the best book or bookish thing you've ever been given? I was given last Christmas, I gave you my heart. No, last Christmas, I was given a huge book by my dad. I think it was a 2,000, 3,000 book pages book. It's kind of an encyclopedia with... How can I explain? Gosh, I, I don't know how to explain it. This is so hard, goddammit. The book kind of tells the story of literature and the most important cultural movements, the most important philosophers, authors from the prehistoric times to I think the end of the 20th century and it's so packed with knowledge and stuff and I haven't read it and my dad when he gave it to me he knew what he was doing he knew that he was giving me like an impossible thing to read I plan on reading it like I wanted to read it this year but it never happened so perhaps next year it could be you know resolution for 2019 but it's like it's a beast it's a beast of a book it was just the best bookish thing that I've ever gotten because I mean just come on it's 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 sick it's a sick gift because you know that that book will stay there on the bookshelf and it will look at me and it will make me feel guilty because I should be reading it but I just it, it was great it was a great gift I loved it ninth question what's a book someone gave to you that you wish you could give back now 
that's naughty. That's a question you don't ask to somebody. Like it's it's like a woman's age. You don't ask a woman how old is she. You just don't because it's rude. And you don't ask this because it's rude. And I'm just I'm not gonna answer it. Nope. And we got to the last question, which is 10. Name a time in a book that a character was given something really meaningful. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here because I'm not gonna go with a book. I'm gonna go with a TV show. And that is because I am in love with this TV show. And I want everyone to watch it and love it as much as I do. It's just... <laughs> it's incredible what they did because... Okay, what TV show am I talking about? I'm talking about God Friended Me. The title says it all, doesn't it? Okay, so the plot of the TV show is this one. So there's a God and there's a guy uh, named Miles. He has a podcast and it's called The Millennium Prophet. He talks about how there's no God. God doesn't exist. He doesn't do this from a bad place. He doesn't mean to offend anybody. It's his way of trying to help people by telling them that they have to rely on themselves. That there is no use to have hope and faith in somebody that it's not here to hope that he will make things better. No, you yourself have to work hard if you want to achieve something, if you want to better yourself. Then one day, he receives a friend's request on Facebook from an account named God. At first, he doesn't accept it because he thinks that it's just a joke from somebody who listens to his podcast. But the more he refuses, the more he gets friend requests from this account. So at last he says, well, whatever, let's just accept it and see what happens. He starts receiving friends' suggestions from this God account. And he soon realizes that he is receiving these friend suggestions because he is supposed to help these people with something that is going on in their lives. And each episode starts with a new friend suggestion and he has to find that person in New York City and help them. I know what you're thinking. It's crazy and it doesn't sound realistic and it's just a bunch of bullshit and who cares. But it's a beautiful TV show. You know that you're watching something precious when you know what's gonna happen each episode you know what's gonna happen you know how it's going to end but you still enjoy every single second of what you're watching every time i watch an episode i'm just completely lost in it i lose track of time i lose track of space i just watch that episode and Every time I cry, every time Miles does something or says something that just touches my heart and gives me hope. And I say this as an atheist, okay? I don't believe in God and I, I don't have faith. I envy those who have faith and believe in God, but I don't. Despite that, I love this TV show because at the end of it, I am crying, but I'm left with a huge smile on my face and I feel hope that tomorrow is going to be better, that I can do something to help people. And it's perfect for this question because Miles didn't believe and doesn't believe in God still. Even though he's doing this, he doesn't believe in God. But he was given this huge opportunity to make a difference, to help people. and. There's nothing better than the feeling of helping someone else do something, achieve something, do something better with their lives. It's the greatest thing, the greatest feeling in the whole world and each episode gives me this feeling. Even though I'm not helping anybody by watching it, well, perhaps I am, you know, I'm helping, you know, the actors earn money and have success, I guess, in a way, but still, even though I'm not actually helping anybody, I still have those feelings within me and it's great. And I just, please just watch a couple of episodes and see if it's not the greatest thing ever. Just, just try it out. 
Okay, that went deep. Anyways, after another very emotional question, um, I'm done with the tag and I'm going to tag some people because you know, I just want to, so I'm going to do that. I don't know if these people will do this tag, but just, I'm gonna do it anyways. I have a list, okay? I'm just, I'm doing a lot of lists lately. Okay, so I'm going to tag Emily at M Likes Books, Serena at A Wandering Mind, Anya at Anya's Bell Jar, and Sofia at Sofia Reads. If I haven't tagged you but you still want to do this tag, feel free to do so and let me know in the comments so I can come and check your video out. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Be kind, be grateful, be a better person and I'll see you soon in another video. Warm hugs. Uh, come si dice sfogliare? Fanculo, come si dice sfogliare? It's not browse. It's not what I want to say. It's not skim. Oh, just fuck you.